With the new X series of scratch offs from the New York Lottery, you can multiply your winnings up to 100 times. The X series from the New York Lottery, it's a better way to multiply. You must be 18 years or older to purchase. Please play responsibly. On this week's episode of Bill's Pod Squad, we've got wide receiver Cole Beasley on with us. He shares his thoughts on what makes this team gel, why being in Buffalo has changed his football career, his love for music and rapping. Plus, he gets into why he calls Josh Allen, Dad? All this and more on Bill's Pod Squad, starting right now. Welcome into Bill's Pod Squad, presented by the New York Lottery, a podcast that takes you into the lives of those on the Buffalo Bills roster. Maddie Glab and Bill's owner and president, Kim Pagula, here as your host. Kim, the Buffalo Bills beat the Colts 27 to 24 in the wild card round of the playoffs. They won their first playoff game in 25 years. It was your first playoff win as an owner of the Bills. What was the day like for you? How exciting is that, that you can stay as an owner, you've got a playoff win under your belt now? Certainly, I certainly, it was, oh my gosh, it, it was a roller coaster ride. <laughs> I mean, we're talking a lot of ups and downs, you know, mixed in the fans being there and the excitement of, of home playoff, but also the anxiety of fans being there. <laughs> and then the game itself, I mean, I know people say, listen, it's different in the playoffs. It's a whole nother season. We've heard that from so many people, but gee whiz, like why does it have to be so tight? I mean, I was going a little crazy up in our box, um, just the way the game was going, um, but not, you know, nothing specific. It's just, you know, but that's what playoff football is about. Um, I, I got to figure out how to channel it all. But I tell you, I was up and down and all around doing my pacing. Um, but like I said, that that's why we love football. That's why we love sports, the unpredictability of it. Um, seeing your team um, making huge plays, um, seeing, you know, the other team coming, you know, coming back to try to, to topple you over and our team standing firm. And it just, um, a lot of emotions. It, it certainly was. What, and the fans, like, listen, 6,700, it, it did. I mean, I, I really do think that this was an advantage for us in a tight game, a lot of support, a lot of cheering. I don't know, Maddie, if you heard it, I heard it. I, I mean, I was amazed at the difference that it made. Did you think it made a difference having the fans? Yeah, definitely. I was listening through because I was in the press box too or near the press box. I heard through a glass pane and, and even with a glass wall separating me from the fans, you could you could even hear them. So I really think that they brought the noise and the energy and what our players needed and what they were looking for really all season in those big time moments where they needed some noise. They needed some real noise, not that artificial fan sound that we've gotten so used to and accustomed to this season. So when the game was on the line, when that Hail Mary got tossed up, I was happy that we had our fans there to scream and holler as we watched Micah Hyde bat the ball away and the clock tick zero and we got the dub. Oh my gosh. How was the sweet? Were oh. you and Dan Morgan just going nuts? Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> there was, yeah, there was a lot of, you know, they, they sit right in that front row and we have the window completely up. So Dan would come up and he would say that his excuse was like he was cold, right? So he's like, he was just coming up the steps yeah, okay, Dan. in that last row uh, because he said, well, it's really cold. I'm just trying to get warm. But I know that's not the reason why he was there. He is a pacer and a lot of anxiety, just like I do. He just needed to get up and kind of just get, you know, his legs moving. Um, so, but listen, like I said, that's, that's playoff football. That's what makes this game so exciting. And especially when you get that W at the end, um, it, it's, it was all worth it. How about the fans though, being so compliant with all the rules? Pretty much any time I was able to watch the broadcast or peeked over, you saw a bunch of masks, you saw people socially distanced. I mean, we're having fans again for the divisional round. So things had to have played out well in your eyes and the governor's eyes for us to have fans again. So how do you think all of that went with the testing to them being in the stadium, to wearing their masks, all of it? Yeah, no, listen, the fans were great and they really did help a lot. Like you said, this was a demonstration project. And so we didn't know really what to expect. And it was a, a big lift for our club. 
Um, but the, and the fact that the, our, you know, the fans really did comply with, you know, almost all the guidelines, wearing their masks, um, the, the parking, and the timed entry, very little issues that we had. Um, that was a big, that was a big plus for us. Cause you know, with that win, the worst thing we could have happened was, you know, that we wouldn't be able to have fans again for game number two. Um, but that's not what happened. Everything went really smoothly. And like I said, got to thank the fans for doing that, allowing more fans to be allowed to come to this game. Um, and hopefully, like I said, I think our team, as uh, as we know, the, the later the rounds, the harder these games are going to get. Mm -hmm. So if I thought that game was hard, um, <laughs> the next one is going to be harder um, as well. And so having those fans there is going to be so key and so important. So happy that it all went the way that we wanted it to go. And we're here for another game with fans in attendance. After the Bills got that victory, I'm sure everyone's phones were blowing up in some type of way, getting texts and calls from people maybe we haven't heard from in a while or just congratulatory texts from our family and our friends. I know I got some text messages uh, from people I haven't heard from in quite some time who've been following the NFL this season and know that I work for the Bills. Just happy for the success that the Bills have had this season. But what was your phone like after the game? Who were you on the phone with? Who was texting you? Was it just a bunch of people? Was any Did anybody special reach out? No, you know what? It was just a bunch of people. Like you said, some people I haven't heard from in a while. Um, you know what? I, I've learned, I, I try not to respond. I know that sounds kind of rude, but like <laughs> the last thing that you're after a game, you're on such an emotional roller coaster. True, true. I'm just like, and I know people, you know, like to reach out, but if I don't reply back, it's just like, I just kind of need that time to just, you know, take it all in. Um, actually, Terry and I went back to his office um, and we're watching the next game that was happening and just, just kind of to relax. Like you said, it, it, I mean, I'm not even playing and it, I was worn out, right? <laughs> just from, like you said, was up early that day, just making sure everything was going right with the fans in attendance and then just the, the roller coaster of a ride that that game was. Um, it, it can be very draining. So yes, I mean, my phone was dinging and text messages coming in, but, um, but I tried to give myself a few moments to enjoy it. So I think that's probably the most advice that I get from people is just enjoy the win, enjoy this, um, this playoff. So um, and that's what I'm, I'm trying to do. I'm trying. I'm trying, Maddie. I really am. <laughs> and I like that advice to enjoy it and to, to not go straight to your phone to, you know, check Twitter, social media, reply to everybody, be in the moment. I was getting ready for a post game show that we tape. And so I was in the control room all by myself because our crew isn't in there yet. And half of our crew is actually at the stadium for the show. So I'm watching the game on the TV by myself, watching it like get super intense. I, I see that it's going to be a Hail Mary pass. And I'm like, oh my gosh. I, I just went back to the Texans game, which I was in the same situation, getting ready for the post game show, watching the game by myself, thinking the season can't be over. The season can't be over. It's not going to be over. It can't be. And, and Phil Rivers tosses the ball up and, and he's denied of that Hail Mary. And my eyes just started watering. I was about to start crying. I was like, okay, you have to get it together. Like, this is just the wild card round. It's amazing that we won, but like, you're about to host a post game show. We got to get ourselves together. So, very emotional win. I'm sure for all of Bill's Mafia, they showed some people uh, on the game broadcast right after, and you could see other people are just as emotional as I was. But you were able to all of us were able to then flick on the next game because there were several games Saturday and Sunday combined six total. What did you think of super Wild Card weekend and the fact that we had three games Saturday, three games Sunday, two more teams were in the playoffs this season than last season? You know, I mean, besides not having the bye week in, as a second seed, True. Um, I, you know, I kind of liked it. You know, I, I really did. Um, because you're already hyped up from your own game, right? And so it just carries on into the two games, knowing kind of like that those, the outcome of those games may or may not affect, you know, your game coming up. So, and I kind of enjoyed playing our game, having the win and being able to yes. then sit back and let other, the other teams kind of like figure out what they're gonna do. So I kind of, I kind of like being able to enjoy the game, knowing that we were secure 
and having the divisional round being able to be played while they are still kind of trying to decide if they're going to make it past the first round. So I did like that part. I agree, and I hope we're feeling that way this week, too, getting to relax and watch Sunday's games. But we'll get to our interview with Cole Beasley. He was an awesome guest to have on the podcast. Gets into his rapping career and his career in Buffalo and why this season, the last two seasons with the Bills, have been so special. But this segment was brought to you by Pepsi. They're also this week's game sponsor. Pepsi is the official soft drink of the Buffalo Bills. All right, here's Cole Beasley. Cole Beasley, thanks for taking the time to be on this podcast. We know you have a very busy week preparing for a playoff matchup against the Baltimore Ravens, but let's talk about this season, what the Bills have been able to do, what this wide receiver group has been able to do in this awesome season that you guys have had. I mean, what were your feelings and thoughts on winning that first playoff game on Saturday afternoon? Of course, it's a game where it had to come down to the wire. What were you thinking on the sideline as that ball is being thrown up in the air and you're waiting for your defense to make a play? Yeah, that's playoff football um, at this point. You'll, you'll take any win any way you can get it. Um, and it always makes you nervous when that ball's in the air for so long, but um, – our defense have been there before and prepared the right way and they were in the right spot to make the, make the play like I knew they would be. Well, what do you think is the difference between last year and this year? Obviously, you know, Josh Allen is, is the biggest thing that I think most fans have seen, but are there other things, at least maybe from your wide receivers room, um, you know, maybe it's just, you know, the addition of some guys, obviously, but can you put your finger on something that has maybe made that difference from last year to this year that that we've been able to make this jump? It's never just one thing. Uh, there are a lot of things um, that, can, that you can talk about for the reason for that. New guys is one. Uh, Josh growing as a quarterback is one as well. But um, I think a lot of us being together for another year, we had a lot of new guys last year. Um, and it takes time to get a lot of stuff. I know it took time for me and Josh to gel, uh, especially with as much freedom as I have in this offense. So, um, it definitely took time to grow together um, as one. And then I really think there's a lot of stuff um, last year from some games, some late games in the year um, that we learned a lot from as well. I think the, the playoff game against the Texans was huge for us. And I really think we needed that uh, to, to sort of grow as a team and, and learn from it. And, um, you know, it's, it's a big reason why we're having success this year. Speaking of growing, Cole, your football career since you've gotten to Buffalo, I mean, you had some great seasons with the Cowboys, but since you've gotten to Buffalo, you've explained, you know, I've been able to do things as a wide receiver that I wasn't able to do with the Cowboys just because of the way the offense was ran in Dallas versus the way it's it's run in Buffalo. But you're having a career season this year with receptions, receiving yards. You're an all pro this season for the first time in your career. So what what is coming to Buffalo meant to your football? career and you as a wide receiver I mean coming to Buffalo you know everybody sees this, the stats and everything but it's more than just uh, you know statistical things and um, it's more than just playing you know the, the family environment that they've established here has been incredible um, it's been wonderful for not just me but my family as well um, my kids and my family have, have just enjoyed it so much um, I know we're under different circumstances this year, but I mean, I brought my kids up here so many times uh, on the off day. You know, we'd have breakfast in the, the players' cafeteria, and you know, my kids—that just means the world to them. I mean, they get to come up here to—I don't even think they may not even realize how cool it is, but um, they get to come up to an NFL facility and kind of hang out with the guys, and um, you know, just kind of see what it's like. And you know, that's been awesome. It's really just the family environment and how close we are as a team has been cool, but um, football-wise, just, you know, having that belief from my coaches and teammates and um, them enabling me to uh, kind of do what I'm good at and doing it more often. So, well, that's really been the biggest thing for me. So, you said, you said family was uh, really important on that family atmosphere, and your father was your first, basically, high school coach. Does he still call you up on the phone after a game and <laughs> talk to you about, you know, uh, what, how you did? Does he still coach you or is he still, is he just your dad now? I mean, it, it doesn't matter whether it's football or anything else. If, if there's anything I'm struggling with or have trouble with in life, he's been, he's been kind of a go-to person for me. And, you 
I mean, it's like he always knows the right things to say. So, um, you know, I wouldn't, not even just football, I wouldn't, I don't think I would be anywhere in, in life without him and my mom. So um, they've been huge for me. And, you know, we still talk about football a little bit, but, you know, he's, he's more checking in where I'm at mentally than anything, uh, you know, for the most part during the season. It's really hard for him to kind of see everything that happens in the game. So it's hard for him to really close me up. But, um, I mean, he'll ask some football questions, but you know, he, he's the one who just keeps my head straight. This season, the wide receiver group, you guys seem like you gel and are getting along like you have been the best of friends for many years during practices, dancing, just having fun, being loose, things that close teams are able to do. Um, what has it been like to be a part of that group this season, to welcome in players like Stefan Diggs and Gabriel Davis? What's, what's the vibe like from those guys? And why are you able to just gel so well together and also on the field, opening things up for each other? I think the credit goes to Chad Hall, you know, for that. He did a good job of laying the foundation of, of the expectations in our room while at the same time. Um, allowing us to, to kind of be free and, and have a good time. Um, you know, it's important to keep it loose in there. I, I've been in some receiver rooms where it wasn't as – well, it's not loose, but at the same time, you've got you to gotta be disciplined. But um, it makes it fun to come to work. You know, I've been in places where it hasn't been like that, and it makes it easy for us to be ourselves and, and hang out as a unit and get to know one another because of, uh, of how he um, kind of sets the stage in the room. So a big part of that is, is Chad and the way he coaches. And, uh, he has a good understanding of, of how players think because he's, he's done it before. He's played and he's played the receiver position, so it makes it a lot easier, um, you know, when he's coaching us for sure. Um, and then on the field, we just – it's kind of like everybody has their own thing, so we fit together very well. Um, Dave has his deal, Steph has his deal, uh, John Brown, and then I do my thing. So – um, they all complement each other very well, and, and that's what makes it so easy for us to play together. You've talked about Chad Hall quite a bit, and not just you, the that receiver group has. Anytime good. you're asked about, you know, how this group has been able to gel, Chad Hall is always a part of that answer. And you guys did something really cool for him over the holidays. You bought him a truck. How did that come together? I mean, the, watching something like that and seeing a exactly. video on Twitter, you could see how much a coach meant to you guys when you decide to spend that much on him. And it's not always about money or, or what you can buy for someone, but it was just evident that that's a close-knit relationship oh, and, a, and a tight group that you guys have. So how did that all come together? Well, it's just, it just comes down to the respect we have for him and the appreciation we have for what he does. I mean, it's not easy managing a bunch of, of divas in the wide receiver room, so um, he's done a better job of, of it than uh, you know, anybody that I've ever been with. So um, we just wanted to do something nice for him. We were trying to trying to think of what we could do, and um, I don't know, he's driving, a, I think, an Acura or something like that, a, a small car. And like, he's a little guy. We need to get him a, a big truck. He's, he's having another kid on the way, so – about to have number two, so we need to get him some more space. And we just wanted to do something nice for him because we appreciate everything that he does for us. And you know, I, re I really think he gives us the best chance to win on Sunday. You know, I, I would tell you, though, my husband, when, when you guys have your masks on, he can't tell you guys apart. <laughs> on air, no, I, I know there's been times when he's called you Chad or hmm. vice versa, um, especially. But now, I don't know, is that a playoff period you got growing there? Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't really think much about it. I just kind of let it go. Um, you know, at this point in the season is how I look. It's kind of like the last, uh, last thing on my mind right now. I've got a lot of other stuff to worry about. So but I, it, it's not just, it's, it's not just him. Everybody kind of mistakes me and Chad. So um, tell him not to feel too bad about it. All right. I, I'll, uh, you know, we, when it's playoff, you know, you do whatever you can. He has lucky socks that he wears, and he swears by it, and he thinks that's going to help you guys with, with the Ravens uh, this week. I make cookies every week, so if, if it's the beard, if it's letting your hair, you know, your hair down, grow long, whatever it takes, you know, we all have to do our part. Yeah, whatever works. I completely agree with that. Hey, speaking of pregame things, I read an article, and in that article it said that you puke pregame. Is that something that you still do or did during your career? Yeah, I used to. I actually did it all the way till probably my second or third year in the NFL, even like in high school and college. But um, 
you know, now I don't, so I don't, I don't know what changed, but. Does that mean you're not nervous anymore? You're, you're just. No, I still get nervous. You, I mean, it's bad if you don't get nervous. I don't, I think, you know, I'd be worried about myself if I didn't get nervous for a game, but um, I don't know, maybe I'm eating better or something. <laughs> Well, we do know that one of the things we love to do, you know, off the field is music. So we kind of, you know, you dropped a new song um, and you just kind of want to see what the inspiration for that was and just how music plays um, a part in your life, you know, off the field uh, with your family and just how long you've been uh, rapping and putting out songs for your fans. Yeah, I did. I know it's sort of a downer, this one, but... Um, yeah, I'm like, I, Cole, I, I, I Cole is in his feelings for that I promise, song. I promise I got happy songs, too, I swear. Um, I was advised to put that one out, but... Um, <laughs> no, it's just, you know, really, it, for me, it's kind of... I mean, I've always loved to... always loved music, you know, in, in high school and, uh, you know, kind of growing up, I was that person who would, you know, have all the exclusive songs before anybody else would, and I'd be asking, did you hear this? Did you hear this? But, you know, then it kind of grew into... Um, I started getting really into it and studying it, and I just wanted to do it. I had fun creating something, and um, you know, it really just turned into something that kind of gets me away from everything else. When I get in the when I get in the studio, it's like it'll seem like thirty minutes, and I'll look up at the clock, and like four hours have gone by. Like seriously, so um, it's one of those things that just kind of takes my mind off of everything else. And um, the inspiration for songs is is really kind of taking maybe how I feel from a specific moment and then I go in the studio kind of just put it down um, and express it how I kind of feel at the moment and um, you know it comes out differently depending on how I feel each day so it's, it's something I love to do and I'll do it forever whether people want to listen to it or not. So you don't know you... in terms of how you song write? That's something... say, it. say it again? You have a process and how you come up with the lyrics for your song so is it you know, do you write it down as you go along or like you said, you go into the studio and what comes out is what comes out? So the, that's probably the hardest part about it because time is so, like, I don't have any time to do anything other than uh, football and my kids. So once, uh, you know, really it's like whether I, I'm at, like I wrote a song yesterday during treatment and I recorded and made a song yesterday. So that'll be a time when I'm doing treatment or... I don't know, just any time I can really find it kind of on the move is when I try to write. Um, but the process, you know, I like trying new things and doing things different ways. It, it depends on the beat. Sometimes the beat, I'll, I'll want to wait till I get in the studio and then I'll kind of just, I'll turn it on and I'll just record me rambling and, and trying to figure out how I want to um, you know, kind of deliver it. I've actually recorded a whole song saying nothing and then replacing it with words later and then going back and re-recording it. So it just, it just depends. I like kind of mixing it up, and it, it just depends how. But most of the time, I'm kind of writing on the go. Do you know who is the good songwriter that you need to play with? Who's that? My, my husband. Believe yeah? Not. Really? Yes. Now, it may not be the rap version, but he has actually a pretty good vibe of, of word and language. And he, like I said, he used to have a notebook. He hasn't done it in years, but used to have a notebook of where he would write down lyrics and ideas for songs. Um, always wanted to be a, a songwriter. So you guys may have to collaborate at some point. Sure. No, I think I think at some point I'll make any type of music, really. I'll make country. I'll make rock. Um, at some point I'll expand and, and when I have a little bit more time to do so. But um, right now I'm just kind of doing what I know for the most part. Um, you know, but as I've kind of done it, you know, I, I could never sing before, to be honest. And then I just kind of was in the studio, locked myself in there, and I did it for so long. I actually taught myself. So it's like it, anything could be accomplished with practice. So I'll make any any type of music at some point. Cole Beasley featuring featuring Terry Pagula. I can already just see it in the lights. And well, the only the only thing though is I don't I refuse to do music if if I don't write it myself because I feel like that's kind of what music is is expression, oh. and I I can't. I can't make myself express something that somebody else wrote, if that makes sense. I have to feel it myself. Okay, that's what, that's, that's what music is for me, really. So I don't, I don't think I could do it any other way. <laughs> do you have your own recording studio at your house? Is that how you're able to get stuff out so quickly when you do have the time? Yeah, I do. I have it in Buffalo um, because I'm here 
more so than Texas. So it's I was missing it, missing it in the off season because we actually had a really really long off season this past year. But um, I was glad to kind of get back to it once we did. Um, I got a whole like ten by twelve foot room that's soundproof down there in my basement. Who do you draw? Um... Who do you draw from, from rappers who are, who are people that you like to listen to or that you like to listen to when you were younger and you kind of draw from them and their sound? Or are you, would you say really nobody because you are yourself when you get out there and you get on the mic and you put out songs? I think everybody inspires somebody, you know what I mean? So, or I think every musician was inspired by somebody in some shape or form. Um, I don't know. There's a, there's a lot of people that I that I grew up on. You know, Eminem is obviously one of them. Um, Kendrick Lamar is one of my favorite artists. I'm really into the deep conscious rap, you know, type stuff. If it, if it has meaning, I like listening to it. I love hearing different perspectives and um, you know a different story that maybe I grew up. Um, so, what what do you think of Benny the Butcher's rap about the Bills Mafia? So uh, he can rap his butt off, but I can't like relate to the um, stuff like how he grew up so that's that's the only thing and people were telling me you should do a song with Benny I was like I would love to do a song with Benny I, did, I don't know how we could make both of our worlds come together you know what I mean I grew up obviously a lot a lot different than he does so um but the dude is super talented and I love the way he raps I'm a big like um I love the technical aspect of it and how people put words together as well so anybody who can do that and he's one of those guys I uh, gravitate towards yeah, we had him on the podcast uh, probably midway through the season, and he was awesome. I know he is such a big fan of you guys and the Buffalo Bills. It's kind of cool to see someone who is who is climbing at the same time as the Bills are, but yet he is still, like, such a fan and gets, gets kind of, like, giddish and boyish talking about the Buffalo Bills, just like he's, like, a young kid. I know he was – amazed getting to record that song that bills mafia anthem from bill stadium so it's kind of cool to see two worlds collide in that sense of things but speaking of where you're from and growing up in texas did you guys just build a ranch or build a house in the off season or two off seasons ago in texas yeah well, I, I bought a hunting ranch kind of my first um was, was my second deal um with the cowboys the, the first one i got that was a good amount of money so that was the first thing i wanted to do was buy a hunting ranch for all of my family where they could go and there was there was already like a little um, cabin on it that had a one room and a kitchen combined with just a bedroom um, my dad wanted to live up there uh, full time and really kind of be my ranch hand and manage it for me so um, you know he kind of works for me and takes care of it and then i so i ended up building him and my mom a house uh, up there on the top of the hill there so um, it's a cool deal. I just wanted a, a place where all of my family could kind of get together and have a good time. So that was that was really the first thing I did when I got some money. When you came when you came to Buffalo uh, from Dallas, completely kind of you know a different situation. You know, is it has it been what you expected uh, when you when you got the call um, that you were coming to Buffalo? Well, it's been more. You know, I really didn't know what to expect. You never know. You know what a new place is going to be like. I'd been in Dallas for seven seven years, so um, that was really all I knew, and I really hadn't. This is the first time I've ever lived out of Texas, so um, you know. And then everybody wants to give their two cents and say what it's going to be like and act like they know, and obviously they've never been there. So it's, I mean, all everybody wants to say is how the weather's going to be miserable. I'm going to hate it, blah blah blah. And I'm like, okay, well, I'll only have to deal with that on game days, really. So I'm not too worried about it. You know, it's not like, um, but. You know, you kind of get used to it. It's like the cold here doesn't feel as like 30 degrees here is hotter than 30 degrees in Texas where I came from. It's like when I went back to to Dallas after the season, I was like, why is it so dang cold here? Like it was different. It's like I got used to the the air here, and, and the air there was something something I wasn't prepared for. But um, like I said about the family environment, that's you know that's really more what it was about for me. I'm not. I mean, I got kids. There's no it's not like I'm living a city life or anything. And I feel like this place was perfect for, for me and my family. And, you know, my, uh, my oldest son was actually upset when I told him at some point we were going to move back to Texas. So I, he, he doesn't want to leave the house that we have here because uh, it's incredible. You know, we're, we're really fortunate to find it. Got a lot of space. So 
it's been a blast, man. The people here are crazy and it's so much more organic um, within the organization football wise. So I've enjoyed every bit of it. Well, I wish like I would I wish I would have did it sooner. Well, like you said, you know, Chad is having another baby. Um, we've got a young, young uh, coach in Coach McDermott. He's got young kids of his own. So I think that lends itself to kind of you guys are all off the field. You guys are facing similar challenges with being a parent and raising children and all the things that are going on in society at the same time. So I think that kind of gives you guys, like you said, that, that family feeling. Uh, my kids are grown up, but at least, you know, um, you guys that have to work with each other on a day-to-day -day can really connect on, on many levels beyond football. Yeah, and there, there were a lot of young guys in Dallas, and there weren't many teammates that I had that really um, had kids. Most of them started having kids when I was on, on my way out. Um, and then there was never anything to where, like how there is here, like if we have a, we don't need more because of COVID, but last year when we'd have get-togethers outside of here, the coaches were all invited to and they bring their kids. So, you know, that was never really anything that I'd experienced before. And um, so I had, my kids were playing with all the coaches' kids too. And it was just one of the coolest things I've ever seen. So um, I've enjoyed it. It's been a blast. Yeah, that's one of my favorite things, just being around the complex and not this year because we definitely aren't, but just seeing kids run around and seeing players' kids and coaches' kids just like running through the office or running around the field house. That was always so awesome to see and definitely it just – was obvious how, how much of a family environment, family atmosphere the Buffalo Bills provide to, to just everyone. But before we go, because I know you got to get going, you've got to you've got to explain the whole dad thing. Um, <laughs> when you guys break down the huddle, and you and some other players are saying, "Dad," and I love you, Josh Allen. So is, is Josh Allen dad or are you dad? Because John Feliciano calls you dad and I'm just really confused by it. And I think it's hilarious. <laughs> so you've got to, you've got to dissolve the rumors here. I, I call everybody that it doesn't matter who it is, um, <laughs> but you know, it, it actually, I actually got it from, from a teammate at SMU that kind of started saying it to be honest. And then, but he got it from, the old E-Trade commercials that used to play with the Super Bowl. There was an E-Trade commercial where the baby, they used to do it like a grown man voice, like with the babies. And there was one on the plane and like the, the pilot started talking on the intercom and then the baby looks up and starts going, dad, dad. And the other kid was like, no, that's the pilot. But that's kind of where it stems from. That is hilarious. You guys are such a fun group to watch. Anything that gets posted on social media, whether it's in the locker room or whether it's breaking down a huddle. I mean, there is so much laughter and love that you guys provide. And from someone who covers the team to him being the owner to just our fans, I know they can see just how much you guys mean to each other. So it's been a fun season to cover. Uh, hopefully more wins coming up. Uh, deeper run in the playoffs. But Cole, thank you so much for being on with us on the podcast. Good to get to talk to you. Yeah, thanks for having me. It was fun. The Buffalo Bills are proud to partner with National Grid in promoting the Safety First initiative where every time a Bill's safety makes a tackle at home, National Grid will donate $50 to the 100 Club of Buffalo in support of first responders and their families. National Grid reminds you to put safety first in your home with this easy tip. If you use a generator, be sure to keep it outdoors and away from doors, windows, and vents. So we've got a game Saturday night. Your your wishes were answered. I know you weren't the happiest about having a one o'clock kick. I don't think uh, a lot of people were super pumped. Everybody probably wanted to have a primetime kick because we know how good the builds are and we believe that they should be on primetime for the entire world to see. So Saturday night football, 8-15 kick against the Baltimore Ravens. We faced this team last season, Kim. It didn't go in our favor. We lost. 24 to 17, I think, was the score of that game. And it was a game where both teams didn't play their best. But the Ravens look, look similar to last season. They added a rookie running back in J.K. Dobbins, who has had such a great season. They've added a couple defensive ends in Yannick Ngakwe and Calais Campbell. So they've, they've gotten more stronger up front, just like we have on the defensive line. So how do you think this matchup is going to go? I mean, these two quarterbacks, Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen, 2018 quarterback draft class, 
class duking it out here in the divisional round? Yeah, well, you know, the game last year was last year. I mean, we are a different team. Um, I think we've matured and grown. And listen, I know that, you know, this year, um, you know, one of the storylines was that, you know, was Lamar really the, the MVP season he had last year? You know, could he really do it again this year? And they did falter, you know, during the season, but certainly in the last several games and in, in the game against Tennessee, um, he, you know, kind of showed that he's back on par with, with the season he had last year. So I agree with you. Another tight game. Um, I know I predicted that for the for the Colts, but this is going to be another in a different way, right? We in the Colts, we had that kind of really, you know, they they beat you in all three ways, and we talked about how consistent they are. Um, the Colts were, and and they did. That's that's they played their hearts out um, and made it a tight game. Ravens game, you're right. It's going to be a different type of a tight game. Um, you know, offense against offense, defense against defense. Um, so it'll be another. <laughs> Another heart attack waiting to happen, um, at least when, the way I'm viewing it. But as we saw in some of the other wildcard weekend games, anything can happen. It's a playoff game. And, you know, I think they said, you know, our, our team, our coach, and I know several people said, uh, said it after the post game after the Colts, you know, we've got better football in us, and we know that. Um, and so I just think our guys, you know, they know what they need to do. You talked about before, you know, the loss that we had last year in the first round against the Texans. Um, those are all learning experiences uh, for our team and the continuity that we have and some of even our veterans who have been in playoff games before. Mm -hmm. um, and even just Josh having that one playoff game loss under his belt, but now having a playoff game win under his belt. I think that really bodes well for us um, in our progression of becoming just a better team overall that can make a deep run in the playoffs. Yeah, I hope the Bills just got that dip out where the, they, they played so well to finish the regular season. They played well against the Colts, didn't have their best game, but found a way to win the football game. So I hope they got there. We didn't play our best football out of us so we can play our best against the Ravens because this is a team that is the best rush, rushing offense in the NFL. They finished the regular season rushing for almost 200 yards a game, and they're the second best scoring defense finishing the regular season, allowing under 20 points a game. So it's a game where the Bills and the Ravens are going to have to play top-notch football if they want to walk away from this one heading on into the playoffs. But Kim, another Sport starts up, another season starts up this week. I cannot believe it, but the Sabres season starts on Thursday. They'll have the host a game on Thursday and Friday this week. So as the Sabres season is starting, as an owner of both teams, how do you split your time when both teams are playing? Do you just get way more busy and have way less sleep? Way less sleep for sure, Maddie. <laughs> uh, but, you know, this is going to be an interesting year for our hockey team because of the shortened season. So at least in football, we were able to play out the whole season um, in, in somewhat normal fashion. Um, here we're playing a completely different division. We are in a tough division um, going so up against tough. teams um, like the Penguins and the Rangers, the Islanders, um, Boston. And we have to play them eight times, right? So, um, so this is going to be a much different season. And so in some ways, it's good. Like, you never know how this is going to go. And I think what we need to do is we really do have to work on getting a fast start because we're not going to have the slate of whole 82 games to kind of pace ourselves. We only have 56. So 28 games at home um, and playing the same teams over and over again. So it is certainly going to be an interesting season, but so excited to get hockey back out. On the ice. Um, fortunately, fans, you know, aren't going to be in attendance um, for the regular season. But just to get our players back here, we made such, um, I believe, you know, some really positive changes in the off season. Uh, you know, our GM switching out our GM to Kevin Adams and the things that he and his team have done, the draft picks that that uh, we had this year, and then some of the the off season um, signings that we had, um, Eric Stahl and Taylor. Um, you know, Taylor Hall being, you know, the two of the, the highest ones. So getting to kind of see how they mesh with this team, um, very much similar to the Bills with, you know, signing Diggs in the off uh, season and mm -hmm. what the impact that he's had on this team. So really just looking forward to getting these guys and getting some hockey on the ice. Um, be doing it kind of by ourselves, but, you know. <laughs> it's been a It'll, year. 
yeah, it'll still be just as good. Even if fans can't be in the stands, unfortunately, it'll be fun to watch the Sabres on TV. And I know when Kevin Adams got hired for that GM role, all I heard were so many positive things from people in the building that have gotten to work with him for so many years and how this is somebody who is so fit for this job, this position. He he knows he knows it all underneath him. He knows it all above him. And he is such a great human to first and foremost uh, for a position like that. But just hockey in general, Kim, what, why are you a fan of hockey? What are some of your, your favorite parts about hockey season? Well, it is so, it's, people ask me all the time, like, which one do you like more, football or hockey? And I'm like, <laughs> ask me that question, because they are truly so two different, very, you know, two different games. They um, are. Speed of, of, of hockey, you know, kind of just, listen, I don't know if you've ever skated. Have you skated before? Yes, I have. I'm not that great. Okay, but to skate up and down the ice, like the amount of, that is not easy. And so at the speed of which these guys are, are skating, the physicality of it, um, you know, that's what, that's why I love going to hockey games because you just, you feel that energy, you hear those sounds um, on the ice. It's a little bit more of an intimate atmosphere. I, I know <laughs> COVID is going to be very intimate, but, but in normal times, you know, you're not in a large outdoor stadium. You're in an indoor venue with, you know, roughly 17,000. Uh, seats, so you just feel a little bit more part of the game, um, and you know it's just I like you said it's just the fast pace of it. Um, I like to watch it actually higher up because I get to see a little bit more mm -hmm. of how plays come together. Uh, so and you don't have the time, right? So in football, you get to like okay, you, you know, one drive or a play, and you know there's there's stoppage, and you get to analyze it. In hockey, you don't have that time. I mean, you could be going on until the whistle blows, like so, or someone scores, or there's a penalty, or something. Um, so you don't get get to able, you're not able to analyze it um, during the game, but you get to feel it a lot more. So that's why I like, that's why I like hockey. Just yeah, a lot of I love hockey. It's so fast. It's it's so fun to watch. You're right. The physicality of the sport, just the intenseness. I I love the rivals. The the old rivals between teams. I feel like it's a little bit different than football in, in some way or reason, shape. Um, but I'm excited to get hockey back on. I cannot wait to watch this team, watch the players who were there last season grow into this season and see how our new guys can mesh with some of our old players. It, it should be a really exciting season. And I do think, you know, listen, you know, we are our, you know, our sports town. And I do think that the success the Bills have had this year is going to bleed over into hockey like listen at the end of the day whether you're playing hockey or football you're an athlete and athletes thrive on competition they thrive on on the grind of, of sport and i think you know a lot of our, our players are bills fans as well um and so i think they've also seen how this community really rallies around and and how much they so much appreciate the success that they were having on the field um, for, for a community that hasn't had it in a long time. Mm -hmm. So uh, to me, I think there's probably a little, even maybe they won't admit it, but even a little bit added pressure, but in a good way for yeah. our hockey team to say, listen, we can get the, you know, we can get the same vibe and the feeling because um, let's, you know, look what happened over at the Bills. Let's keep this going for our community and, and our city. Um, so. Like I said, I, I have a lot of high hopes for, for this team and excited to get started. Yeah, how wonderful would that be if we go from, of course, a successful Bills season into a successful hockey season. That would be so great for our fans. They've had so much fun watching the Bills and we'll have so much fun watching the Sabres as well. But that's going to do it for us for this podcast episode. We thank our listeners and everybody's tuned in. Say that again. Another win, another game, I another podcast. That's how it goes. Let's keep it going. Let's keep this thing just scheduled every single week. Uh, got some more awesome guests coming up on the podcast. We hope we have more wins here heading down the line, heading down the next few weeks so we can keep the podcast going. Just like you said, Kim, it's been fun to be a part of. Cole was great today. And we just hope that this thing, that this train, it won't stop. That's what we want. Right. That's right. Thanks, Maddie. See you all right. Thanks, everybody. We will talk to you all next week.